pressure casting with TC804 Jet Black Casting Resin. In this tutorial, we're going to cover the basics of casting using pressure to prevent air bubbles. And we're going to be using the TC804 Jet Black Casting Resin. This is a, obviously, jet black casting resin that can be used for a lot of weapon props and prototypes that require a true black color. Now to start off, we're going to cover the basics of the TC804 Jet Black Resin. Now, TC-804 is the sister product of the regular TC-804, which normally just cures white. But TC-804 is, of course, jet black, and it is a convenient one-to-one -one by volume mix ratio, a 7-8 to eight minute working time, and impact resistant with a 75D hardness. And that's important there. Typically, when you start getting higher up on the D scale, sometimes you lose some of that impact resistance. But the uh, TC-804 and the TC-800 are unique in that they have a high D value. They're in the 75 to 78 range on the D scale, but they still retain really high impact resistance. And these are also really good for automotive applications for aftermarket car parts and things that require higher heat tolerance and just better physicals all around. Now, not mentioned here, but the mixed viscosity of TC-804 Jet Black is 200 centipoise, which is actually very low for a casting resin with these properties. So easy to pour and easy to pour into a, a pour spout, maybe even a small pour spout for uh, casting applications with thin walled parts. Now, real important, remember that because this is a jet black resin, the Part B has the pigment. And it's very important to make sure you shake up the Part B before each use to make sure that pigment is suspended and you get true black parts and not gray parts. Now, I've skipped ahead here to the resin already dispensed into a mixing cup. And we're mixing that, of course, one-to-one -one by volume. And this batch, this was about 20 ounces total. But uh, I shot this in the summertime, so excuse my short pants there. I normally reserve this for my OnlyFans page. But uh, anyway, moving along, we're going to go ahead and pour that into a silicone mold. And this, of course, is a 5092 silicone mold made in a previous video. And what I'm doing here, I filled the mold almost all the way up, and I'm going to tilt it forward to burp out any of the major air bubbles. That's an important step because there are some castings that you could be pouring up with your resin that uh, might have an area that might catch a large void or large air bubble. And even with pressure casting, that won't eliminate those large voids. So make sure you tip the mold over and burp the mold to get those large air bubbles out of the mold. Now, another really critical part of the process. When you're using a pressure chamber, remember that uh, pressure pot has that air inlet where high pressure air will enter the pot. And that high pressure air, if heaven forbid, that air inlet is located right over the base of the mold, it's going to blow that casting resin all over the inside of your chamber and obviously ruin the casting. So make sure that your mold is positioned in a way where the air, that high pressure air coming into the pressure pot does not aim directly at the resin inside the mold. TC804 has a seven to eight minute working time and about a one hour demold. So there's more than enough time to get everything properly mixed and measured and properly situated in your pressure pot. Now, a quick word about your air compressor. Make sure your air compressor is regulated so the air coming out of your air compressor is at 40 to 60 PSI. And make sure you have a good size reservoir on your air compressor so that you can immediately fill up your pressure pot. This is about a six gallon pressure pot. So we wanna make sure we have at least that large of a reservoir on our air compressor. If you don't, it takes a long time for the pressure pot to build up to the right pressure. And in that time, your resin could gel resulting in a bad cast. Now you'll notice I also am keeping my bucket to the side here with my casting resin. And that is by design. You want to keep that handy. That way you can check what's happening inside your pressure pot and know when your casting has enough strength to demold. Because remember, thinner walled parts will take longer to cure completely, whereas thick parts will cure faster. 
Now it's important to understand what's happening in the resin when you pressure cast. When you get up to pressures like 40 to 60 psi, what happens is the bubbles don't disappear, but they're compressed and go into solution into the resin. So they become invisible. Now real important for this process to work, the resin has to stay under pressure throughout the gel time and the en entire cure time of whatever resin you're using. So in this case, TC804, which has about a one hour demold time, that means that resin needs to stay under pressure for that entire time. So if we remove that too early, those bubbles will pop right back. So it's real important that we maintain that pressure throughout both the gel time and the full cure time of our resin that we're going to be casting under pressure. Now, it's about an hour later, so we're ready to check what's in our mixing bucket. And once that has cured to have enough strength, we can peel that out. It's still a little green, but this is much thinner than what is in the mold with our little Mothman here. Now, real important step. Obviously, you want to bleed off the pressure on your pressure pot before you open your pressure pot. This could be a lethal mistake. If you forget to uh, bleed off that high pressure and you try to open that pressure pot, that can end badly. So remember, you are dealing with high pressure, which can be extremely dangerous. So don't be stupid. Make sure you understand the equipment that you are using and make sure you understand the process before you do this. Uh, again, sorry about the, uh, the focus on my legs here. This was summertime, so I was wearing the short pants. So now ready to open up our pressure chamber. And again, that uh, one hour demold time, that's going to vary a little bit depending on the cross section of your part. If you're doing thin walled parts, those might take a little bit longer or thicker, chunkier parts might go a little faster. So you see, I pulled off a little bit from around the top of the mold there, and that gives me a good idea of how the condition of the part. And you can see I got a little bit of turbulence at the top of the mold from that air pressure coming in. Not bad, but that's an important thing to be aware of, that that air coming in will create some turbulence. So it's all the more reason. Make sure that you have that air inlet offset from the mold. Now, I didn't mention this earlier, but uh, the silicone molds that you use for this process must be vacuum degassed. If they are not vacuum degassed, any little micro bubbles will open up under that high pressure and create defects in your cast. So there we have our bubble-free little Mothman. Now, for this particular cast, I just want to do a quick finish on this with some copper B. And you've seen us do this a lot with some of our life cast sculptures and things like that around our shop. This is a great way to finish little sculptures like this. And for this, just for the sake of this video, I wanted to do something really fast just to bring out some of the detail on this little guy. So we're just gonna dry brush some of that copper B over the top. And you can check out more of our finishing techniques and resin casting techniques on our video library page. I'm gonna put a link to that in the video description. So be sure to check that out. Of course, the dry brushing process this is very simple. That's why I'm using it here is just grab a little bit of that copper B on a clean brush and just carefully brush that across the high points of the sculpture. And that's a real easy finish to do. That's why I'm doing it because I wanted something simple for this. So in the future, this guy is actually going to be properly painted with little glowing red eyes and whatnot. But I figured for a jet black piece, this was a good, easy way to finish out this piece. So there you have the process of pressure casting using TC804 casting resin. And again, just remember when you're working with high pressure, make sure you understand your equipment, make sure you understand the process and the materials that you're using so that you don't have any sad mistakes or heaven forbid injuries. So there we have our little Mothman. And again, he's ready to go as is, but we're going to come back to him in a future video and do a more proper paint job. But there you go. And of course, as always, all of the materials in our tutorials are available on our website. So be sure to check those out at brickintheyard.com. I'll put all of the links in the video description, so check those out. And of course, as I mentioned before, I'll put a link to our video library. Lots of resources in there to check out. And those of you just joining us, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, click the little bell icon so you get notified when we put out new content. Thanks again for watching.